you want the player to not be totally surprised there because it can learn and you can never beat it and then the player is going to be like on the controller through the uh impossible the gamers are pretty like mad yeah so they're and, and, and the like designers be like oh i don't know how to like tune this it's like it just learned to like learn yeah. like how to beat you like i don't know what to do like you're listening to the cg spectrum podcast CG Spectrum College of Digital Art and Animation offers specialized career training for the film and game sector. Join our hosts, Career Development Manager Maxine Schnepp and CGS Mentor Justin Mullman as they chat with industry experts doing cutting edge work in film and games. Now, on to the show. Hey Justin, so this week I had a really great chat with Firas Hassan. He is a senior AI programmer at Splash Damage. His work is amazing and he's previously worked for some other really big studios like Ubisoft, and he's also currently a CG Spectrum department head for the game programming department. Really smart guy. His background is amazing. And so we talked about things like finding your niche. So his niche is in AI. We also talked about developing confidence in your field, being proactive, networking, and also just trying to get a good work-life balance. It's something that he really believes in and so do I. This is pretty rad because whenever we talk about games, we tend to focus more on art and design and not enough on programming. So I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about it and what he shares with us. You know, I'm from the generation that like saw the internet and all that, like we didn't have computers um, at age four, three, all that. Uh, my first introduction to computer science was late in high school, um, right? Like towards the latter years, uh, actually the last two years to be exact. And uh, I had, you know, always enjoyed math and sciences and something about um, creating games. So I've been uh, gaming like since I was younger because we had Atari and Commodore and all that. But uh, the first thing I did in high school was like make a little asteroid type game in computer science. And like it just blew my mind, like writing code and then seeing, you know, this interaction. Like I love the pressing the right arrow and the thing moving to the right pressing space bar and it would like fire it was just a line like not even like a bullet or like a straight up black line but yeah. that to me was like oh this is amazing so yeah i ended up uh realizing that i you know didn't have much artistic ability if you will like i couldn't really draw uh so i was like i want to be involved in like an artistic um media but what i can contribute is uh code like moving other people's mm. art um around so right. uh yeah. I saw like computer science was kind of like the field for that. So I ended up uh, enrolling in Ryerson's comp sci program. That's where I, I spent, um, you know, four years learning programming. And then it wasn't game specific at the time. Also like gaming uh, colleges, game uh, programs, even unis, like it was foreign. Um, I don't even know if any existed, to be honest. We had our introduction to graphics being through OpenGL. So, you know, all the students that were interested in gaming uh, immediately in that course, like tried to do something gaming related. It was like a time where if you wanted to learn a game program, you kind of like had to do it on your own sort of. They're like, we're going to teach you like programming fundamentals. And if you want to turn that into a game, that's, that's like, that's on you. <laughs> yeah, I like that though. I feel like for me, because I'm like, I feel like we're similar generation, I, I want to say. And yeah, same thing. It's like I didn't grow up with a computer. My like brief um, experience with coding was like doing like CSS for my MySpace page or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MySpace was over. I'm like, I'm over it too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me more about how you kind of went from you know, that, that program and having to do things on your own and figure things out um, by yourself, like what, what happened next um, in, in your course? Yeah, that's the thing. Like um, at the time there was a open source, like graphics rendering engine, and I was very interested in, in game programming. So on the side, as I mentioned, I started looking at like um, forums, communities, like examples, I would just see like, how are people making games? And I found this engine so this is you know not like unreal or unity this was very raw like it just did rendering and there were tutorials and i just spent you know time learning that like um you know for uh, a few months after graduation i just put together a demo and then uh luckily not far from where i lived uh, in st Catharines, like an hour and a half away there was a company uh silicon knights hiring uh, programmers essentially at that time also you weren't like necessarily a game program that just needed software developers. Um, mm. So I applied 
uh, for them. And I played, I played a lot of 2K sports. Like I love uh, NBA 2K, um, anything related to 2K. I was like a big fan. So I applied there and then heard nothing back from them. I, I imagine it's probably because they were in California and I'm like a fresh graduate. <laughs> They're not going to fly me out to Cali. But um, nonetheless, like Silicon Knights got back to me and um, I was fortunate to get that job and like learn a lot from the seniors that work there and that really you know got my foot in the door uh and i would spend like two years at silicon knights um yeah working with great people and seeing like the actual um game development cycle come to life it was learning through experience um, and applying um my skills on the job what what was in that first demo do you remember yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a robot. Uh, it was like a multiplayer um, robot fighting game. So it was like you were a robot and then you can because I wanted to do all aspects. So this engine just essentially had graphics. So I added networking so I could like have multiplayer. And then I found like a robot model somewhere online. So I got that and I added like guns, like guns are part of gaming, I guess, at that time. So I had to like get some pew pew going and then um yeah it was just like in space the the terrain was like a space terrain like in a it, it didn't look great by any means but it showed all the it had sound it had networking it had physics um there were like things that could fall i think there were, i had a car for no reason uh, other than you can shoot it and it would like fly away um right, right. so it just was like a mech battle game, very raw, it had particle effects, but like, you know, it wasn't like, wow, this is like, I mean, it was just like, wow, this is like, things are, um, you know, showcased well enough to see that they work um, well, like the networking works, you can find uh, a client, like a player, um, the shooting works, the damage, uh, the detail of like the feedback where once you get hit, there's a particle effect, there's a sound effect, like, you know, it wasn't like a lot, but the little bit that was there was done well enough to, you know, showcase mm -hmm. that, okay, this has all the working parts of the game. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like you weren't trying to be an artist. You know what I mean? You're not trying yeah, to yeah. showcase like these other things. It's like what, um, you know, tools or, or like, you know, things in the game actually work, I guess, you know, and making sure the functionality is there. Yeah, my, my skill set of like being able to read um, code, which is what it was like, this is one engine, the networking was another bit, and being able to connect these to get an end product, because I figured, you know, I would be hired on to complete tasks that are similar to that, like somebody would say, hey, do this, and I wanted to show I can, like, if you tell me to make a shoot action, here's proof, if you tell me, like, support networking, here's proof, so that was it, like, I mean, I wasn't in a mindset of I want to start my own company or anything. like I wanted to learn from yeah. a company. So I wanted to show, hey, I'd be an asset. And then I was like, all right, cool. They hired me. This is amazing. I'm going to start learning from these guys. Like, what is it? How do we actually make games as a part of a team as opposed to myself being self-taught and like getting assets from uh, the web? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's like such a big um piece of information is like, well, how do people actually make it? Like doing something in school or like making a personal project, like that's one thing. Obviously it's still difficult. There's still things that you're trying to do and you can get inspiration from real games or, or you know, real people working. But yeah, a lot of those things, even like how an engine is used, like there's so many proprietary tools at some of these companies, I'm sure that like, you're like, oh, I thought I knew how to use this. And then you jump into something they're like, oh, no, but we use it like this here. Or like, this is how we export this. So like, this is how you submit your code to us. Like, we're, we don't want it to look like the, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. like making yeah, yeah. up examples, but I'm sure you you have some no, like uh, real life examples. Like, are there things that you're particular about now? Like when you teach students or when you work with other people on your team, like, do you find yourself being more particular? Like, oh, actually, like, I like it this way. Or like, if you could send it to me like this, like, are there any things that you find now that you're like particular about? Yeah, like, I mean, you know, if you look at an, any developer, like if you look at your code from 10 years ago, you'll be like, wow, like that was like, you know, not how I would do things um, now. So like, I am more particular about like certain formatting, certain, um, uh logic like um you know use of like booleans like there's things that like um 
are kind of like a fast way to get something working, then the benefit of experience is that you've kind of like done a lot of systems and code. So you know where it's going to end up as opposed to like the right now. So like a lot of junior programmers would be thinking right now. And that's like the coding beginning of like when you're understanding things, you're kind of like just putting things on and figuring out how it works. And you're like, okay, this works, problem solved. And then as you program more, you're like, wait a minute, actually this works now is not problem solved because somebody's going to ask me to change things like 100%. And so then as you like mature, you're like, this works, but if I was to change it to do this or that, how difficult would that be? And so like, that's, you know, kind of something that, um, I'm particular when I look at something, I think like, Hey, if somebody was to ask you to like change this, the way you currently have it is not flexible. So I'm not like super strict about maybe tabs and spacing and all that. Like, uh, like if, if I want to be, I, I could be, but like, at the same time, I want to, you know, not be that guy. Um, but yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah, and there are things that like, for sure, I look for now. My particular one is like early out of a function, which um, it's like nested if loops is kind of like technical, or whatever, but uh, I'll yeah. prefer an early out than like a, a huge nest of like, if, 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 and like going down the line. So little things like that, but yeah, we get these perks from other people. Like I didn't get it like for myself, I got it from, somebody reviewing my code and like telling me and I'm like, okay, cool. This guy has a great point. I respect them. Like he's my colleague, but he's been in the industry for this long. Like the code that he writes is phenomenal. So I want to kind of like pick up some cues from him, some good habits. You know what I mean? I was fortunate uh, to work with people that I picked up a lot of good habits from, I hope. And, uh, you know, I try to pass that on and I do pass it on to students, which is, is like a benefit for them because some things that you would only get uh, in the industry, you can actually get from a mentor who's who's had that already. Yeah, yeah. Like I and, and I think for the most part, it sounds like a lot of these improvements or, or like things that you might prefer or be particular about. It sounds like it's mostly for efficiency or like teamwork. It's like, yeah, you might be able to make it work for yourself, but you're not like a one man game studio. It's like someone's going to have to pick this up. Someone might ask for changes, like you said, or can you make this faster? Could you whatever? And then it's like, oh, well, now all of a sudden it's harder to, to fix. But it's because you have to like work with other people. I think this is where we differ a little bit. It sounded like you kind of had a really good idea of what you wanted to do uh, with with games and game programming, like even while you're still in school, I like I think at the time I was like, oh, I want to be a VFX artist, but I didn't know that there's like, you could be a compositor, you could be a modeling artist. Like, I didn't know like all of the different steps. I was like, oh, I just want to work in VFX, like, right? Like, I didn't know all of the, the different jobs. And so for me, it was like, I had to work at some studios and then like, it took me a couple of years to figure out like, oh, I think I want to do this actually. It was like some trial and error of trying some different things and then slowly figuring out like, oh, okay, I think this is actually what I'm best at. It's not actually, you know, being an illustrator or like or whatever. It, it's actually like, oh, I work well with, with people. And it took me, I think, like three or four years of working different jobs to kind of figure out like, okay, this is actually what I'm good at. Uh, and this is what I like to do. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I'm trying to talk to students and when I mentor people like help them figure some of this stuff out earlier you know like ask yourself these questions now while you're still learning instead of waiting until you're actually in the industry to like figure figure it out so yeah I'm sure I'm sure your your students are lucky to have you as a mentor as well to like give them some of these little tidbits of like real life knowledge and industry knowledge um so early on so they don't have to figure it out once they get there you know once they start working in the industry yeah or maybe they'll come back yeah yeah and it's like if they don't pay attention or like maybe they take and then like <laughs> one day like a year later they're like oh yeah right that was that was actually a decent point that i kind of like yeah. went in one year and then like lingered but like didn't really stay and went out the other year but yeah like i mean i relate with a lot of like to be honest i was not uh the perfect employee and like i wasn't like um the one thing that i i did well was i absorbed things like a sponge like i i would like be but like you know i i wasn't like i said where i am now i was not 10 years ago so like when i see mistakes when i like I, i'm like i i remember doing that like i remember you know and it happens uh because programming is like so you have to be on there's times where like even now like 
you could have one day where you're feeling like you know everything is is going well and then like another day where you're just kind of like writing this code that the following day you look back and you're like man like i can't believe like this is what i wrote so it's one of those things and it's like you try to instill like good habits and like say these things encourage things so that they eventually are kind of like a memory reflex like where it's like okay like this i've done like five times this is the way i, I like i should do it but it's hard to it's it's great to give advice to people coming up and like give these tidbits but at the same time mm-hmm. i can see where uh sometimes it's not like absorbed or like a mistake is made yeah I'm like, yeah I've, I've done like i've been there like i don't expect you to be at this level so it's not like oh i can't believe you did that it's like oh okay like i I remember being there and then keep working at it eventually like what i tell everybody just like coding is something that's applied you can't read you can't watch videos and just like absorb like you actually have to like go and start programming like that's that's how you get better not reading is great watching videos is great like both of those mediums are are really good but to actually absorb that you gotta take it and actually start applying it and i guess it's like that with anything like i mean artists like probably don't watch people drawing and say okay now i'm they'll have to like draw after watching a video (laughs) well exactly i mean it goes with like everything like even like i teach some of the more i mean i call it boring but it's more i guess in a better way of phrasing it would be less creative or less technical it's like oh like talking about networking or like communication it's like People think that like, oh yeah, I'll just like make a LinkedIn page and like forget about it or, or you know, like, oh yeah, I just send an email. It's like even things like communicating with a recruiter or like sending emails. If if you're someone whose like main thing is coding or, or drawing, communication isn't going to be your strong suit because you're not practicing it. And even things like that, it's like the more you practice it, the better you kind of get, you know, even with yourself now, I'm sure when you're starting out, your focus is more execution and like being the programmer in a team of other programmers, someone gives you a task, you, you execute it. But now it's like you have a different view and you have to manage other people. And, and you know, it's the it kind of flips and you have to work on other skills. Like how, how has that been going with you and like your management style? Do you think that like some of your past experiences have um made you better do you think you're like a good manager or do you start to see now like oh shit maybe maybe that my last manager wasn't actually that bad i can now relate to (laughs) some of your struggles i think yeah i think i like genuinely learn from every manager like uh and to be honest like i've been um you know not the best employee with some managers because i am kind of like um I like to, if I see something like should be done a certain way, I kind of like to rebel in a sense, like do it. Like I'm not like the best with kind of like taking orders, which makes like an employee (laughs) not like the best. Right. So, but luckily what I, I do, um, well is like my communication is pretty good. And like, it like is funny because there's a, you know, a stigma about programmers not being, I guess, good communicators, like even in uni, Mm. um, I'd be like out at like a pub or something and like at the university pub and like meet people and they'd be like, oh, like, where are you in? And I'm like, oh, comp sci. And they're like, you're in comp sci? Like, well, like, I felt like comp sci people don't like communicate with others or whatever. They just, I'm like, that's like, no, that's not true. Yeah, that's a bad <laughs> yeah. stereotype. And I yeah, totally like, fell into yeah, that. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, no, man, like we like, yeah, comp sci is, we're fine. So it's the a personality benefit, thing, I guess, more than anything. Yeah, like, but the benefit is like, so for me, transitioning to managerial and like even like doing interviews um for hires that we have like it came naturally because i've always been uh, a social person like I, I enjoy working with others talking with others so i find um you know I, I like my approach of kind of being social and like friendly in a sense but i, I also like uh, other people's approach which is like very um I, I don't want to say like Milton, but I can't think of a different word. And like, yeah. like there's like, okay. there's a certain Milton. thing of like, you know, yeah, like there's a certain, um, and, 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 and you have to know your employees because some employees, if you're like, you know, like too leaning with, like you, you're going to kind of not get the result that you might want. Like you're going to have to, at some mm-hmm. point, put your foot down and be like, look, dude, like I was trying to be like this, but like, you know, the, and it's, we it actually need that on, done. 
today. Yeah, it depends on it depends <laughs> on you know like the employees, the relationship. Like, I mean, it's hard. In the end, you want to get the best of um, the people you're managing, and like, so it's up to you to figure it out. Like, I mean, get the style that works. But for me personally, um, transitioning to managerial, which uh, you know, I try not to treat like um, uh, a place above anybody. I kind of try to try to treat it as like, you know, we're all in the same space. We're all doing the same thing. It's just I'm the one who's like talking to you guys to see what to do next or whatever. But like, we're all in the same same spot. So we're all in the same boat, me, but I'm the boss. <laughs> yeah, like and I, I don't, I don't like I genuinely don't. Yeah, like feel like that. But uh, yeah. and I feel. It, it it came maybe because I also played a, a ton of sports growing up. So I've been in, you know, team activity since I was a kid. Like all I did was uh, play sports and go to school. Like that was, that was it. So for me, it came naturally in a sense. And I am fortunate to be able to like just talk with whoever I'm interviewing or whoever I'm managing and be like, hey, like, you know, what do you think? is a good approach or uh here's why i think this approach is good like and you know what do you have to counter that sort of thing so uh but yeah i've learned from past managers that i've i've thought have have been really good as well and teaching me things that's the best way to kind of um kind of learn you know it's most people end up having multiple mentors in their lives like at different stages i think uh -huh. and you know early on it's just about like learning how to do the basics and I'm sure, you know, later in your career, you started learning from like leads or, or managers that inspired you. You're like, oh, that's like, that's a good leader. Like, I, I really respect working with this person or, or I enjoy that. Um, do you have any tips for people who are interested in like moving up to positions like that? Maybe they're a senior or a lead programmer and they're like thinking, okay, what's next? Either I make a career move and I just go senior somewhere else, or maybe I become a manager. Like, do you have any tips for people that, that are thinking of like what to do next when they're at that stage? Yeah, I think like the career progression usually goes uh, two ways. Like eventually uh, you're gonna become a senior by way of either uh, experience like years wise or just like the uh, knowledge and competence that you have, right? So there could be programmers that have, you know, been in the industry for two years that are as skillful as like somebody that's been in 10 years. Like, I mean, there's really, really smart people out there and like, you can't say, hey, you're not um, a senior because you've only done two years. Like this person probably put out a lot of work. So eventually it comes down to a split if you want to go technical or managerial. And it goes to what you like doing. Because when you do go managerial, you're going to be coding less, right? Because you have to like be on top of tasks here, there, go to like meetings. So if you don't like meetings, you probably want to avoid the <laughs> managerial route. Yes. Yeah. It sucks. There's meetings and like they're not always the best. And like you have to actually be there for them. So you, you luckily with um, uh, being a programmer or software dev, can choose the path that is for you because one will be concerned with strictly coding and like that's what you're you're going to be doing you're going to be evaluating systems writing systems i feel like you have to be confident in your programming ability no matter which route you take because the team will kind of like respect you a little bit more if you kind of show that you you understand uh the language the problems you know you have like good problem solving like i mean if you're a good communicator that's great but it would be like more on your part to convince people to trust you and all that if all you have is communication skills. Like, I mean, it could work, but you still have to have a certain degree of confidence and have to put in the time to like prove to, uh, not prove, but like just show through example that you kind of understand what you're doing. So that way, when you give out a task, you'll be like, yeah, yeah, like he knows what he's doing. I trust this, right? Um, mm -hmm. So both require a, uh, true seniorship and like that you understand um, C++ or the engine or whatever it is. And then it, it's up to you to be like, okay, I'm better at communicating with people and managing. So I want to take this route. And the tips there would be, you know, start communicating. Like if you, if you, that's the route you want to go, get yourself on the interview board. Like if there's interviews happening with like a senior, like ask, like, can I sit in? Can I maybe ask a question? Like, um, 
attend meetings maybe that you're not invited to uh if it's possible to just at least see how and like usually companies give this mentorship like ability where you can reach out at the company that you work at mm -hmm. and be like hey man i'm interested in this can i shadow you can you like uh but in the end it's like also there's community opportunities right you can go give a talk at a college you can um go on like uh forums you can hold a twitch like i don't know there's like so much media that you can yeah. talk there's so many ways to show your passion now that than there was before yeah if you're the managerial bit talk and then if you want to be the tech designer guy on your github do some like tech stuff like don't rely on solely like your nda work kind of thing that nobody can see do something on the side be like hey i built this tool like it's on my github uh people will comment use it you'll grow i mean it's just like there is literally no limit to the possibilities that you can put out there because of all the media that we have between Twitch, Unreal, Unity, GitHub, like there's always something for you to do if you have the time, right? And time is probably the, the biggest thing, but. Yeah, find people or learn something. I, I think yeah. a lot of people, at least like when I was a manager, I, what I saw is very common is, you know, like, or like you find out someone leaves, they're like, oh, I'm quitting. And you're like, okay, like, why? Like, obviously, they found a better job somewhere else or, or something. And they're like, oh, well, you know, like, I wanted to be a, a singer. Like, I wanted to be a lead. And I wasn't getting that here. And it's like, oh, well, like, we literally never knew. Like, you can't assume that everyone wants to be a lead. Because I also worked with some artists who uh, they told me that they never wanted to be a lead. Like, I had one guy who was, I was like, hey, you know what? We, we don't have a... A, like a, a main supervisor on the show because they're being split with other projects and so we would be nice to have like another comp lead or like someone who could like help me spearhead this or review stuff with me and this one guy I worked with I, I won't name him but he was literally just like no because he was like I don't want to like tell other people what to do I don't want to be responsible for other people he was like I just want to like come in and do really well with my stuff but I am not someone who can lead other people. And he was like, I just don't want the responsibility. And he had the the years of experience. He had the the technical knowledge, but some people are just not um, made for that. And that's okay too. But but yeah, I think talking to, to people, like telling your manager, like, hey, I'm interested in this. Maybe it, I don't, you don't have to say like, oh, give me this job or like <laughs> try to like ask for it right now. But just be like, hey, like eventually, you know, maybe this is a one year goal or maybe this is a five year goal, but I just want you to be aware of it. And then they can maybe help you be like, oh, OK, let's get you a mentor or like, you know, or you tell them and they don't help you. And then you realize, oh, OK, well, maybe this company isn't giving me the support I need. And that's when you can go to these like outside sources where you talk to like an outside mentor or you meet people or you go on some other place to whatever speak like you said or, or or talk to other people but at least you know you know that it's like okay if I can't get this here then I need to go elsewhere or something yeah. like that but just like I expecting think... things to land is <laughs> the thing with it is just like it's it's a title if you chase that uh it's it's good because you feel like okay you're getting rewarded for the work that you're doing and um you know the time like but it's also bad in the company if let's say i work 15 years at the company but i'm not a social person like i'm not like like i say like everybody knows like this guy is kind of like a, a dick like if you go around they're gonna like not be the nicest to you right yeah. companies have that you know if you reach this ceiling where like they're like well we got to do something and they're like okay like guess what you're now the lead like that's that's bad right like i mean whether that person accepts it or not it's like just they're maybe a lead in like by smarts or years, but like not necessarily to get the best of people, which is what it is, right? Like that's what you're meant to do. So it's one of those things where like as an individual, right? Like the chase should be confidence because what really sells you is your confidence in yourself that you are actually an expert in this field. Like I don't view um, leads and like all that. Like some companies don't even have leads. Like uh, there's gave companies that just have feature owners and like you could be a feature owner one year in the industry, 10 years in the industry. And like you're expected to be good at what you do in order to, you know, you still report to like somebody probably like a producer or whatever, but like mm -hmm. it's less of a 
emphasis of like the top down thing. And other companies have like a really tough, like they got like, you know, lead, 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 and it's like five levels deep. And it's like, you know, it, and, and like sometimes that works for some people, it doesn't work for the others, but like the end of like the day, you gotta, you gotta ask like, why am I chasing this title? Like, why do I want to be a lead? Is it cause I feel like I don't have a, the amount of respect for how long I've spent in the industry. Like it just, mm. my resume looks bland. Cause it's like, I've been doing it for 20 years and all I am is this. And if that's why you're chasing it, like probably isn't the best. Like you, like, you know, putting senior in front of it is just as good. Like there's people, uh, who've been working 30 years and they're like senior. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my friend, he was like, I'm cool to just be here. And he was like, I don't want to yeah. be a supervisor. I don't want to be a lead. Just like pay yeah. me more <laughs> if you want to give me recognition. Yeah, like, and, but and like senior, th this title is fine. <laughs> exactly. And senior does that. So, but if you're chasing it because you genuinely feel like you've read uh, some uh, motivational books, like you're good with talking to people, people around you like uh, are like, hey, man, like I like your idea. I want to like, you know, listen to you. If you feel like that's what it is, then that's a good reason to chase it. So at the end of the day, though, like regardless of what it is that you're chasing, whether to stay senior, go like lead or like go to the technical part, you kind of have to have confidence because like as a lead, when your confidence gets shaken, right, it's not good. And the best way to be confident is to be an expert in your field. So unless you're reading up on articles, like, you know, practicing, keeping up to date, eventually somebody's going to like, perhaps say something that may shake your confidence be like, I don't think you're like what you should be because you don't know this or that. And then like the conflict arises and like, who knows how that's solved? Like, I don't want to know. <laughs> but yeah. at the end of the day, the, the real thing that you should work on is that confidence in your field, because that is essentially the career you chose like you should i'm not saying like nobody should be a workaholic whatever i value my spare time a lot but you know you got to like pay attention because this is kind of your career so you're expected to like know what's happening around you and some people might like float like and just uh you know not even ask for like so you can just be like where it is it's like here this is what you expect out of me is what you pay me this is like this is what i'm going to do don't expect this because i'm not going to give it to you and that's fine a company be like you're doing amazing and if you don't want to like grow to this like what can we do like you're, you're doing your job like that's great but yeah you shouldn't try to like say like hey i've been here 10 years i demand lead or otherwise yeah, i'm going to go yeah. to this other company and then they're like this yeah, guy's yeah, got 10 right. years Deserve you're a lead yeah. yeah and then they're like yeah, yeah just because just of so, the years or something yeah, yeah. Hey everyone, quick shout out to CG Spectrum for helping make this podcast happen. CG Spectrum is an online animation, VFX, digital painting, and game development school that prepares you for a career in film and games. Whether you're just starting out or you're upgrading your skills, get personalized career training and mentorship from industry pros who have worked on blockbuster films and best-selling games. Courses are 100% online and you can choose from one-on-one -on -one private mentorship options or group classes with just four students max. You'll also get access to career support services and join an awesome community full of like-minded creatives just like you. Learn more at cgspectrum.com. We're bringing the industry to you. What was it like to move um, from from here to, to there and how have you adjusted and stuff? So it's pretty simple from like um, Canada, probably even America, but um, you know, the language stays the same. Uh, and Canada's like very UK influenced, like all the like signs that I see, like uh, McPherson, like uh, all these things like are, like I moved to Scotland before London and it was like, man, I recognize that surname, that surname, like I have friends back in Canada. And I'm like, this is like just, I, and like there's even here, I grew up in Scarborough along the coast. There's like Scarborough, Whitby, Pickering like, or Peterborough, like all like the same name. So oh, yeah, yeah. moving somewhere where there's a language barrier, like Montreal was probably more difficult than Scotland and uh, England. But in regards to like making friends, it's double, um, no, doubly difficult. That doesn't make sense. It's more difficult <laughs> because um, we're in the middle of like uh, remote working. So it's not like oh. I moved. Um, Why? So it's, well, 
It's like we're still. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I was like, man, are you serious? What pandemic? Uh, oh, right, right. Okay. I'm like, sorry, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was like, uh, okay, good. But so Scotland was easy because yeah. we were in the office, uh, made a ton of friends. Here, uh, I still i have only gone to the office once for like a social, but the fortunate thing is that I play, I still um, do a lot of sports and like have hobbies. So uh, the majority of my friends I found through, yeah, I guess they'd be teenage hobbies like skating and surfing and stuff like you wouldn't really associate. Um, some That's a hobby now. You can have those thing. hobbies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, like like cycling is so, a hobby for me, like I think. So. Yeah, there's cycling co- clubs yeah. and stuff. But like, yeah, basketball, all that. Like, so a lot of my uh, friends were actually outside of work. But I do have a couple uh, friends from work as well. But yeah. yeah, like the socializing because of the studio being like closed in the moment um, is not the same. And I live actually kind of like far, like 40 minutes away from the studio. So I'm not even in the same area as like some of the other employees. But that'll change, uh, I guess, like when we open our doors, I'll get to meet more people face to face. We'll probably go to a pub or something, hang out and then... Um, get to know each other better but yeah you find moment, out you hate them all you're like oh yeah yeah you finally meet them in home. person yeah yeah, yeah. 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 All, all of like the funny slack jokes just like don't translate in real life or something you're like oh you're <laughs> not what i expected <laughs> uh, no, we've already met it's all good but yeah that's true that could happen i mean there was like yeah somebody i think was like uh mentioned like yeah it's always strange when you see somebody from like your zoom calls for the first time in, in life and you're like oh like yeah i thought you'd be like taller or something like that like it's a rude thing to say like imagine like somebody saying like to you, like ha huh, i thought you'd be taller it's like, like that's like not nice but damn you look older in real life it's like oh okay yeah you know so i don't know it is what it is like yeah that, that is such a like a unique problem that's happened i think to so many people now like a lot of my friends included um so many people in the past year uh, two years now uh, um have started new jobs completely remotely and have never met any of their coworkers. it's like this new phenomenon like obviously it happened in some cases before uh bc before covid um okay (laughs) but but uh but not as common. Like now it's like whole departments or like whole companies sometimes have never actually met each other, especially ones that like, you know, in film, there was like a lot of layoffs. And so all these companies are like rehiring now. And it's like these whole new teams, most of which, you know, have never met each other. And it's like starting in this place and like getting to know people is so hard when you can't just like meet them in the kitchen for coffee or like bump into them somewhere. It's like, you're kind of stuck in these meetings and stuff and these like the happy hours. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> like some of them are terrible. I'm happy. That's yeah, like not yeah. as common anymore, but, but you know, and it's like not a <laughs> real interaction. Like it actually would be yeah. if, if you were like, let's all go to the pub after work. Yeah. Like that's very different than like a zoom happy hour, you know, but it's weird. A lot of my friends I've talked to, they're, they're just like, Oh, it's it's strange to start something and work for months before ever even stepping into the office or yeah. meeting someone in person. Yeah, no, I, I, like in the UK, there was like a, a moment where people were like, "No more uh, virtual pub quizzes, please!" Like, we don't want to like do it. Like that was like a yeah a thing. But yeah, like I mean, yeah, it's it's something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I it's guess we're still right. we're still in it. It's hard to like be objectively talk about something that you're like, I'm literally still doing yeah. this. I, I haven't met half these people. <laughs> to, to backtrack slightly, you're like talking about burnout. Um, and also kind of like mixing this with something we were talking about before of like, sometimes you teach someone something when you're mentoring them, or, or someone who's more junior, and it kind of like goes in one ear and out the other like they don't absorb it until they actually like practically do that thing or they practice it or something like happens to them um and this happened to me recently where i am like i teach these classes about careers and one of the classes i teach is about burnout and like recognizing signs and like seeing it in other people seeing it in yourself like what to do if a team member has it and stuff like that and most people are kind of like oh yeah it's that same kind of like mental health chat and like you got to go outside and go for a walk and people are like yeah 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 like whatever right like they're like i'm fine now i don't really care and i had a former student who's now working in the industry reach out to me recently um and, and they were like maxine i i think i'm experiencing burnout 
And I'm like, yeah, okay. I mean, the fact that you're saying it out loud means that, yeah, you're probably getting burnt out. And she, you know, explained the situation and this and that. And um, a few days later was was in the hospital because it had, like, caused some real physical problems, um, like, from stress that developed into, like, real physical issues that, that required surgery. And they were like, yeah, I, like, remember your class, and I didn't really, like, think about it, and then all of a sudden it was happening to me, and it was, like, snowballed into this big situation. But, you know, imagine if they weren't able to say something or, you know, realize, like, oh, maybe I should reach out to someone, and... Like, I was so happy that they could talk to me about it and then, like, you know, figure it out. Yeah. Um, has something like that ever happened to you where you're like, oh, it's like in one, e one ear, out the other, you didn't absorb it. And then all of a sudden you're like smack right in the face. You're like, oh, I remember someone telling me this. <laughs> Probably. Like, I mean, like I said, when I was younger, I was doing like way too, too many things, you know, like um, I was like all over the place. But um what I said before, which is the focus and the, um, the like taking it as a career, like way back, um, uh, a lead of mine was like, you know, like if you focused, you'd be like so much better. Like you, you just, you seem like you're, you're like sometimes here, sometimes there, like whatever. And I was like, okay, like, sure. But I continued to like, cause the thing is I could do my work, right. It wasn't like, People were like, oh, hey, like, this is not good. It was like, okay, this is, this is good. But I was, that was it. Like, I was just doing my work. And then I was like, out oh, doing this, that, or the other. And so, like, that focus thing I got, but I didn't apply. And it wasn't until, you know, I wanted to uh, progress. And I, I, like, you know, saw peers and, like, I would go to, like, a GDC, and, like, see other people in the industry. And I was like, man, like, okay, I, I like that they know this subject so well, and, like, that. And, like, there's this community and I was like, okay, like I got to really actually focus on the community in my career as opposed to, you know, checking out at a certain time. And everybody goes through phases and like, I'm not, again, I'm more, uh, you know, happy with like people using their time off and all that. But at the same time, it was like, you know, like, and I can see it in, in younger uh, people and like mentors and like even uh, people that were like, like I can see where it's like, you're kind of like, here but not right like you're like okay i'm gonna like do this task but like i'm only doing it like so like as soon as i'm done i'm out of here like and i'm and that's fine like again but there's like a body like you could tell when somebody's in that phase and i feel um very fortunate that i got my education my experience and everything before like the amount of distractions we have now with like social media and like TikTok and things like because like it's very easy to just zone out for like 30 minutes so easy like you could like yeah. go down like a, a tiktok uh a whole, tunnel yeah, or, or like youtube, you, like, it's YouTube like, hole or something like that yeah so it's like it's like difficult so for me um you know uh that hit me in the face when like it just clicked and i felt like i started understanding uh my field better like programming better like, like i said like there was a moment where I just saw things in like reviews or like whatever I was writing that were a bit more clear. And it was like from focusing, uh, reading more, applying more outside of work, like early on, that was it. Like I would just do work, leave. And then afterwards I'd be like, okay, like let me read a little bit, do a little more on the side. So I get like this confidence and this uh, experience. And, you know, some people uh, grasp things at a rate that's like unbelievable like we've all had a friend in high school or uni or whatever that is just like acing things acing yeah. like without even like they just they look at something and they get it and you're like and you got to spend like an hour or two hours deciphering this and like yeah. you know like figuring it out and they're just like boom so for me you know i wasn't on the high end of the spectrum of like acing i wasn't on the low end of like spending too much time but like i had to put in work and it's been like that and i've been putting in work to you know, gain that confidence. So the focus part hit me in the face when I got the benefit of it, I guess, when like I, I like started seeing things. I'm like, okay, like what she mentioned to me uh, way back when of like, you'd be a lot better if you focused was yeah. true. It just took me like a few it years just, later to- Yeah, it took you a while to, to actually like it. value that opinion, I think, and realize like, oh, here's how it can actually be practically applied to my life. 
Did, did you find yeah. that that's kind of how, um, or, or was that like around the time or the point where your career shifted and you started to specialize more in, in AI and kind of like take ownership over your, your future? Like, was it kind of around that time where you're like, oh, click, like, I can't yeah. control this. Yeah. It's not just up to some like manager who's like giving me opportunities. That and another, like uh, another coworker that I was working with, that was like an inspiration. He was just like, you know, doing such amazing things that I was like, man, like this is like, I, like I'm inspired. Like the, you know, the stuff they're coding, what they're doing is like what I want to achieve. Like this is, this is where I want to be. And so, you know, um, taking, like kind of like advice from them, uh, looking at like their code, like doing things on my own. That's when it started to really be like, okay, this is the focus. This is like where, cause there's like, um, a thing about, you know, it's cheesy, like passion and all that. Everybody says passion. Like, you know, you know we want passion to develop. It's, it's like, okay, like you want somebody to work like, forever. Right. But, but honestly, but it's, it's like, like you need it. Yeah, right? It's, it's like, <laughs> It's cringe to read on like a, a job description, but in reality, I get what they mean because it's like, yep. and it's it's not like I wouldn't I wouldn't say, uh, you know, like surfing for me is a passion. Like I, I love it. Like, and I don't know if I would say the same thing about coding, but in reality, like it is. Like it is what I do, and like I like I like I like the challenge. I like seeing other people's work. Like it's it's nice. It's inspiring, and so sometimes. Um, you know, you have a job that you just see as that. And then for whatever reason, one day, maybe an employee, maybe a job description, like something, something changes. And you're like, actually, like I'm inspired. Like I'm like passionate about learning this or that. And for some people, they have it like right away from right when they start in the industry. For others, something like sparks it. So I think that's when you kind of push yourself to like do more in a sense. Otherwise, you know, if you get feedback that you're doing all the right things but you're not you're gonna think okay things are great and you're coasting and then boom a new lead comes or something happens and you're like oh man like this person's really um telling me i'm not like doing my things around here and you're gonna have to like you know uh change like either when push comes to shove like you're gonna step up or you're gonna be like no actually i don't like this and then who knows maybe change career paths go to a different company but i feel like that's a part of the fun man is the timeline the experience getting in the industry rolling with it some people have high expectations of like oh man like i can't wait till i get in my first job i'm gonna learn so much and then you realize maybe that the company is super disorganized you're like what like this is like one of my game jams like this is like i thought i was gonna come in here and like learn so much and in the end it's like everybody's at the same level you don't know like you just kind of roll with it so like um it all goes back to just being confident in the subject matter like you're not going to be able to control the teammates the the first job that you get all that um and if you really want to get that job an interview test that like what is your confidence and how much do you know and generally i've done interviews and you brought up a good point people should practice i've done interviews where i felt bad because like the candidate was so nervous like just like and i'm like it's it's fine um, and hopefully it gets better as you do more interviews. Like that's what, what's going to help it. Um, so, and then hopefully like the more you can practice, the less, but some people are just nervous in general, just talking, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so they can be yeah. genius, like know everything, but it's just the nerves of like, you know, that pressure of being under this test. And hopefully there's other companies who do other things too, where they do tests or like leave the candidate alone. And it's like, you know, get in like your comfort zone we'll see like humans are resilient we'll figure something out to to get the, the best of it or all of us but um yeah at the end if you're not confident it'll show it'll show and like the best way to get confident is to practice 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 and like you know be good at what, what it is that you want to do for as a career was there a particular project like because before you got into some of these um, higher level roles when you moved to Scotland and, and London. Um, was there a particular project um, before you made that jump that, that kind of helped you realize those things? I know you worked on some bigger projects like, like Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, 
did you like get inspiration from some of those projects or tasks you had to do? Yeah, I think like Far Cry, um, Shangri La, like the little DLC that we did for Far Cry 4 was really nice. I got a, a feature that I owned and uh, I felt like I, I drove this direction in a way like people, there's like a, a bow and arrow that you can shoot and the arrows can like kind of uh, gravitate towards you and all that. But like it was, it was something that I felt like I did like really well in a, in like a modular kind of way like I even had arrows that spawned elephants at one point like as a joke but um it was like that in a way that like was very uh scale like it was nice I was like oh it's like cool people like it appreciate it and then Watch Dogs 3 I felt like also I did a an AI system for like some of the melee combat and I felt that was kind of like uh a unique approach and it was also kind of modular I enjoyed doing it and you know like it you know it, it led me to give a talk and it was it was nice it was like very rewarding so i feel like those kind of like two projects made me realize it's it's rewarding one to like you know get praise for doing something it's it's great also when you see your product or tool or whatever it is is being used and by a user that understands it intuitively as opposed to like something designed for you or somebody has to come to you like every five minutes and be like what does this do how does this work like whatever when they can right. pick it up or if you can explain it once it sinks in and they understand the benefit of it uh yeah that was those two projects i think and assassin's creed actually was like one where creatively it was good because i got to think of an option like of a, a game mechanic and put it in there and i worked with an animator to make it come to life but i still wasn't like as focused you know what i mean like it it worked it was good but i wasn't where i needed to be to really say like okay i'm like senior i'm like this i was still kind of younger and like you know work on my mind here but also like doing this or going out or something yeah, on my party. mind on the other yeah. side so it was like so i wasn't like 100% where I needed to be. Um, but fortunately, we're here. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we made it. <laughs> yeah. um, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I, I want to talk a little bit more about your work in, in AI and some of the, the exciting things that are happening in that, in that field, um, whether it's on some of the current games you're working on, or maybe just some things you're excited about in the future that you see other people doing that, that inspire you. Yeah, I think like it's already, um, just recently, uh, Unity demonstrated like, um, uh, an animation that was like AI driven and it's in the video, it says like, you know, it gives accessibility to people that want to make games you can have like these models, these animated models without, you know, the budget and the scale of a team that like uh, a Ubisoft or a Blizzard would have. So I think the advancements from my end, so there's two things about AI and one is the player experience. So for me, that part, you know, technically doesn't advance much because it's more so the person making the game has to understand like what the AI's role is and the programmers provide the tools to make that come to life. So the, you know, machine learning, which is like a big buzz and like, uh, things of that nature don't tie well into that because you can't really tune it to the gradient that you need, um, you know, and like there's dialogue, context, all these things that come like with the whole thing. So for me, that that stays as is. But what I do love about um, things that like uh, the surgeon, like machine learning provide is the world that you can have like so previously where maybe you needed to uh, spend like a, a few months programming a vehicle, you can actually get machine learning to learn how to drive in a sense. And then upon that, so the world becomes more believable, you know, dialogue again, the way autocorrect kind of like picks up on how like you can get a system that picks up on the player's habits and like what they would do. And if there is like a bit of a, a lag in like a game, it can maybe pick up for them or start to like spawn things around them like that is more of interest like even generate quests that is like what i like is that it opens the box of like previously where it's like everything is thought of i thought out of and like a game is in this box um with some of the things like that have been around like procedurally generated worlds and all that that's that's been there for a while but with um ml as well you can kind of get things that are not necessarily in your scope of thought when you made it. Like, so it really does become like systemic in a sense. 
And the systemic uh, and contextual aspect of gaming, I always love. Like I, I love when things around you, like if you you know have a button like B, it's not always going to do the same thing. It's more based on context. Like say B when I'm in combat is the punch, and then B when I'm like you know talking to somebody is to wave. Like I like that. And I think to that degree where you have like AI systems like machine learning, um, you can actually gain a better understanding of the context through the player's play cycle. The world itself can learn in a sense and like change um, parts of it to kind of reflect that. And to me, that's like the next step of gaming where the experience is not always the same. And it's big for like, you know, uh, players playing on like Twitch or whatever, they're like, hey, like, check this out. It's like, oh man, like, I can't believe in your game this happened because that's essentially real life. You know, you and I can walk down a street and our experiences are going to be totally different, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the things that happen on the street when I'm there are going to be different from yours. And like, it's worked in a sense, like, you know, you've seen it in open world games where they, like somebody on the street will say something, there's dialogue, whatever, but it's like, staged in a way and i think the the next step is with the animation software that we have with dialogue with all these things that can kind of like learn off of each other mm -hmm. the background element can be so much more believable and tied in but i still feel like the main focus of like boss fights and all that stuff that player experience will still be not heavily scripted but still kind of like you're going to know how you want it to be because you want the player to not be totally surprised there because it can learn and you can never beat it. And then the player is going to be like throwing the controller through the, uh, the gamers are pretty like mad. Yeah. So they're and, and the like designers be like, oh, I don't know how to like tune this. It's like, it just learned to like learn like how to beat you. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, it's like, ah, uh, and like you're dying all the time. So for me, like that, a fun element is like feeling that reward. Like, oh, I figured out it's weak spot. Like, it's like, yeah, you killed it. Like, cause that's the fun part is like not losing, but yeah. I think the world around you changing and like learning in a sense or like adapting is super cool. Uh, and that's something that I, I personally, uh, you know, not a lot of games and none that I've worked on yet have used machine learning in a, in a way, um, that is like really, um, enhanced the, the game experience. So I'm, I'm personally looking forward to the first project and first experience I have where I'm like, okay, like here's uh, machine learning because the applications that I've used it in have been rather trivial. So right. I'm excited to actually see that like in a, in a proper way. So yeah. that is exciting. I, I didn't even think of it that way. Like, I feel like, especially for the like training or like tutorial phase of a game, we're like just trying to learn how to play someone who's maybe played something similar is like, yeah, you don't really need to tell me how like what controls yeah, can pick to be yeah, pressed yeah. for a gun because it's probably the same for most games. And so they pick it up and then it's like, okay, we're going to move them on to stage. And the tutorial four. goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or like yeah. we're going to give them a harder to... thing to, 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 to kill or like a, a, a bot that's like faster because we can tell that they already know how to fire a gun. Whereas someone who like doesn't yeah. have the controls at all maybe goes through like a different path or, or like a different set of things come up or happen because they could tell yeah. it like they kind of suck at it <laughs> and, yeah, the and you don't word. have to <laughs> and you don't have to think of every case so right now you could do that but you'd have to like think of like every case so the learning approach is like having the input and output and that's the hard part that like programmers and gamers in general are having a difficult with like is how to like actually gauge that but mm. once you figure that out that solution will work for 10 games, a hundred games, you know what I mean? Like one game is like, oh, this person has to like kill this, this and that, do that under five minutes. And it's like, okay, their experience go to level four. But I've already like, you know, thought that out, which kind of sucks. But once you figure out the algorithm to say, this is what a good gamer is, you can just slap that on a bunch of things and it like learns and it's like, okay, like we can use that and you can skip to this tutorial and so forth. So, or, or it like uh, automatically adjusts the, um, cause you know, like most games. Yeah, setting the difficulty. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, difficulty yeah. you pick setting. like, yeah, 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 you're hundred percent right. Yeah, yeah. And then you can like start being like, oh, this is getting difficult. Let me dumb it down and start dying a few times. And then it gets like easier and you're like, phew, that was cool. But yeah, I mean, I think these are all great things and it's, so it's cool. gonna be cool to see how they're gonna be uh, playing out. Nah, but hey, hey, but are you hiring? Fun. 
Yeah, actually, we are. I like we have it. We've got work. So yeah, we can work. Yeah. You, so we can work with you. So tell us about yeah. some positions that you're hiring for. So we have a lot of uh, associate roles uh, available. Um, yeah, we got associate programming, assistant programming. We have uh, tech design, audio design. There's yeah, check out uh, Splash Damage Jobs, and there's um, yeah, a lot of jobs out there. So definitely apply. We're based out in the UK. Uh, but again, if you can travel for work and everything works out with visas, um, that shouldn't stop you. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah if you're eligible to work in the check. UK, that is where you can find yeah. yes, is at yeah. work <laughs> for splash damage. Awesome. Thanks for listening to the CG Spectrum podcast. For more on this episode, visit us at cgspectrum.com forward slash podcast. Check out our show notes where you'll find links to our guests and more behind the scenes. And if you're enjoying the show, please like, rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're listening or share this episode with someone who might like it. See you next time.